I used to work night shifts at a Home Depot. There was a time when our store stayed open 24 hours for about a week. For the most part, this wasn't a problem because, typically, no one shops for home improvement items at 2 in the morning. Well, except for that one couple who came looking for marble countertops at 1.30 in the morning, and the woman was wearing a nice dress. There was also that young lady who came searching for a toilet paper roll holder a little after midnight. I had just finished my first break. And she was wearing jorts and one of those stereotypical karate outfits, white with a black belt. She was oddly specific about which roll holder to get. But the real story involves the insulation. It was nearing three in the morning and another guy and I were stocking insulation, as well as fixing the bays and performing some maintenance tasks. A bunch of large R30 insulation rolls had fallen in their bay. And as I was sorting through them, a hand emerged from the mess and grabbed my arm. I completely lost my composure, causing not only the guy I was working with to freak out, but also my boss, who was on the other side of the store, came to investigate the commotion. It turns out a homeless drunkard had entered the store at some point, presumably before the night crew arrived, and had made a nest in the insulation where he fell asleep. The man was in terrible shape too. He was so far gone into inebriation that we had to call the police to remove him. After that incident, I became more cautious around the insulation, at least for the duration of the time the store stayed open 24 hours. I used to work at a small hotel, and the manager there told me a terrifying night shift story. It was about midnight when she got a call at the front desk from a man. He said that he's with his eight-year-old daughter who dances competitively and needed advice on what she should wear. She gave him some basic fashion advice. He asked my manager, What about fishnet leggings? Do you think those are too sexy? Then proceeds to talk in graphic detail about how he thinks his own daughter has been trying to seduce him for weeks and how he's starting to enjoy seeing her dance in these cute outfits. Meanwhile, my manager is looking through a computer system, trying to figure out who this man is so she can call the cops. However, the room he was reportedly in was empty. The man ends up hanging the phone up before she could find out where he was truly calling from. A couple months later, at around 11 p.m., my manager answers the desk phone. A familiar voice asked her if she could help him pick out an outfit for his daughter's next dance recital. She asked him, let me guess you want to know if she should wear fishnet leggings? The man immediately hangs up the phone. Many, many years ago, I worked at a regional radio station in the middle of fucking nowhere, Australia. I was the overnight operator. Keeping the overnight playlist running, set up for the morning, do all the manual checks for the next day, and jump on the desk if anything funky happens. I spent a lot of time sitting in a tin shed in the middle of a paddock with my dog, shoes off, listening to 50s and 60s music and doing crossword puzzles. Except one night when the Roo shooters came through. They spooked the kangaroos in the paddock and one of them jumped head first through our office window. So there's me, barefoot and half asleep, when this six feet tall kangaroo smashes through the glass window. Blood and glass everywhere. My dog starts chasing the kangaroo, I'm chasing my dog, and the kangaroo bounds around the office, knocking shit off desks in the dark, bleeding everywhere. I ran and opened the studio bay doors, and my dog chased it outside. Where, I'm assuming, the poor thing, the kangaroo, was shot. Then, I had to call my boss. I worked in an emergency room. The worst night that comes to mind involves a patient that was bitten by a baby timber rattlesnake. He was bleeding out of every single orifice by the time he got to us. More blood than I'd ever seen before outside of a motorcycle versus 75 miles per hour, head first to asphalt. I don't remember how many doses of Crofab we gave him, but it was the hospital's entire supply but trying to get him stabilized, arranging the helicopter transport to a bigger and better equipped facility. All the blood, those weren't the worst parts. The worst part was when the patient lost control of his bowels. I will never, ever forget that smell. 
I spent the entire time standing by the door with a battery-powered fan and a handful of gauze pads saturated with cinnamon oil trying to reduce some of the smell. The doctor occasionally stuck her head out, just so I could waft the cinnamon oil in her face. Yes, by some miracle, the patient did end up surviving, and as far as I know, he made a full recovery. But the blood, the smell, and just the shock of it all. Yeah, never underestimate a baby timber rattlesnake. Many years ago, I briefly had a job that started at 3.30 a.m. The job itself was very boring, but the commute was wild. The world is at its weirdest in the very early morning. Road hazards haven't been called in yet. So one day I pulled off the freeway and discovered that the off-ramp was completely flooded, deep enough that I have no idea how my car didn't stall. But the most interesting discovery was that if law enforcement has to raid a home, they do it around 3 or 4 in the morning because that's the best chance of everyone being peacefully asleep. One day I was nearly to work when I noticed something off ahead of me. I slowed down and came up to a massive police blockade, squad cars everywhere and absolutely crawling with heavily armed officers, but all in absolute silence. They silently waved me down a side street. Just a creepy, unsettling experience. I work at Walmart. We have had people slit their wrists or OD in the bathroom, even have sex on the floor. One of our managers was attacked by a shoplifter with a hatchet. Another got maced in his face, but his beard saved him from most of it. Just a lovely bunch. Anyway, the scariest thing that I have heard was one Christmas day when the store was closed, the alarm went off. A manager lived down the street, so he had to be the one to go check it out. He came in, shut off the alarm, then checked for any signs that someone had broken. in. Nothing. He hears a child's laugh. Now he was alone in the store. No one else was with him. He looks for the kid, but can't find anything. Hears the laugh a few more times, then goes to check the cameras. Nothing. He locked up, and refused to go back into the store alone. Apart from that story, the only creepy thing I have personally experienced was being on a register, away from everyone else. I would constantly feel like someone was behind me. It would creep me out in the middle of the night. Years later, I hear someone talking about things falling off the shelves for no reason in a particular spot. We had a remodel, and the spot was where that register had been. I avoid that area at night now. <laughs> 